So let's get back to that head sculpting that we were supposed to do. So we're going to get into brushes and the basic brush techniques, but in order to do that, let's talk a little bit more about resolution and dig a little bit deeper into orienting ourselves in space. So let's go back to our brush palette over here. Let's go ahead and choose a Sphere 3D. Let's go down here to Initialize at the bottom of your tool menu here. Let's change this H divide to 12. Hit the Tab key. Let's change V divide to 12. Hit Enter and then hit Make Poly Mesh 3D. So now we know we can sculpt on this object. And I'm going to navigate out, so hold down Alt, start moving, and then let go of Alt for the classic ZBrush navigation. And now we have a sphere in our scene. If we turn on Polyframe, you're going to see our object is made up of a bunch of points, and you're going to see a little dot snaps to each one of those points, and those are called verts, vertex points, vertices, and basically each point on this object is connected by an edge. So these straight lines in between points are called edges. And each one of these edges, when they connect around a shape, connect a face. So we have three basic components for any 3D objects, vertices, edges, and faces. Now when we sculpt on this object, and later on when we go to polypaint, which is basically coloring in vertex points, what we're really doing is manipulating these three basic components. Now by default in ZBrush, when you first start up, it's going to be the standard brush with a dot stroke. And essentially when I just drag over this object here, you're going to see it's not going to do very much because there's not very many points on this object. If I go over here to my draw size and make it very large, now you can see it's kind of pulling these points away from the object. However, because there's not very many points, we're not really getting any detail it's just pulling those points in space, and we're kind of getting a lump over on the side of our object. Now, like we know what we can do, we can take our undo slider, or we can hit control Z until we're back to where we started. Now, there's a few different ways we can get more points to manipulate so we can get more detail while we sculpt. One of those is if we go over here to our tool menu and we scroll down, we have a geometry tab. I'm gonna go ahead and click that to open it, and right here you're gonna see a divide button. If you go ahead and hit that divide button, Keep an eyeball up here underneath your active points. Now mine's kind of cut off a little bit, but if I double tap this, you're going to see we have 122 active points, and if you just hover over our selected tool, you're going to see we have a point count and a poly count. So we have 122 active points. When I hit divide, you're going to see it kind of averages those verts a little bit. We now have subdivision history, so if I take this slider, here's subdivision level 1, back to our original 122 point count, and then I can go back up here, and now we're at 506 active points. If we take our polyframe button, turn it off, and then turn it on again, now you'll see a faint line where our object was subdivided. Essentially what it did was take every single face and divide it into one, two, three, four individual faces. If I hit this divide button again, and again, turn off the polyframe, turn it back on. You're going to see each one of those faces is now divided in four, and our point count has increased to about 2,000 active points. Now, if I turn off polyframe, and now I start sculpting on my object, you're going to start seeing I'm able to get more detail because I have more active points now. Go ahead and undo that. Go ahead and hit divide one more time. Now we're up to 8,000 active points. We're getting even more detail. And if you want, you can sculpt on a lower resolution version and then hit divide and if you hover over this you'll see the hotkey for that is control D so you can hit control D on your keyboard you can go ahead and divide continue sculpting go ahead and hit divide continue sculpting and you're gonna see we're getting much finer resolution if you make your draw size even smaller you're able to go through here and get some very fine detailed lines however you still have access to your subdivision history. So you have subdivision level 1, which is very few points, subdivision level 2 getting a little more, 3, 4, 5, and finally 6. At 6 we're at 129,000 polygons. Now depending on your computer specs, your CPU, your RAM, and your hard drive speed, that'll kind of determine generally how responsive ZBrush is going to be while you're using it, but Generally speaking, ZBrush can handle quite a few polygons. So if I hit divide a few more times, now we have 2 million polygons. You may think that's a lot, and in some programs, that is a lot. Uh, in ZBrush, 2 million polygons is not that big a deal. You can sculpt on 2 million polygons, no problem. 
But again, you can drop down to subdivision level six. You can make, and again, I'm tapping S to bring up my draw size or you can go up here and then I'm gonna make this bigger. So you can go down in subdivision levels, make very broad changes. You can go up in subdivision levels and you can make your brush size smaller. You can make very fine tuned changes. And then if you wanna go back down, you can again go back down to subdivision level three, let's say, make broad changes, go back up and you won't have lost that detail. So you're able to use your subdivision history to work on broad to the detailed. And that's the basics of subdivision history and subdivision levels. Now I'm gonna introduce you to something that I used to leave until much later, but I found that when you're first starting out, this is a very powerful tool to kind of get you up and running in ZBrush where you're not as limited by your geometry resolution. Because what can happen is, if I turn this polyframe back on, and let's go back down to subdivision level one. Let's go into our brushes here, or instead of going up here to your palette every time, just hit B on your keyboard to bring up your brush menu. Hit the M key on your keyboard, and then hit V. You're gonna see right here there's a orange V. So you can actually select brushes like that in ZBrush. You can hit, again, B to bring up the brush menu, M to bring up all the brushes that start with the letter M, and then V, or go down here and select the move brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these points and I'm just gonna move it way out here into space. And you're gonna see all through here, all of these polygons are pretty evenly distributed. They're all about the same size. But this one right here, I'm really going to stress these polygon faces and you're gonna see this, these polygon faces are huge compared to these ones. Now if I go back up in my subdivision history, you may think, oh, okay, it, it carried my detail through and I still have a surface to sculpt on. And I still got plenty of resolution. But what you're gonna find if I go down here and turn polyframe off, and let's switch back to our standard brush. So again, B, S, T for standard. And now if we start sculpting down here, let's go ahead and make our draw size fairly small. So we're sculpting down here, we're getting a lot of resolution, it looks very nice. As we continue sculpting upwards though, you're gonna see you start getting some banding artifacts. If you undo that, let's go back to our move brush, B, M, V. I'm gonna make my draw size much bigger. I'm gonna tap S and make my draw size bigger. I'm gonna continue stretching this out. And you're gonna find is, even though we have two million points, what's happening is if we turn polyframe back on, these faces are becoming really super stretched out. So again, if we go back in here with our standard brush, BST, and we're sculpting down here, everything's fine. All of the polygons are nice and evenly distributed. As we come up here where the polygons get less evenly distributed, it's going to be a much poorer surface to sculpt on. So that's one of the limitations of having polygons in a subdivision history. If you're just sculpting on a sphere and you're not planning on doing anything drastic to it, you'll probably be fine. But usually when you're first starting out, you wanna create fantastical creatures and humans and all sorts of crazy stuff that aren't going to fit perfectly within one of these primitive shapes. You're, you're gonna to wanna to make pretty drastic changes to it. What's gonna allow us to do this without having to worry about subdivisions or adding more geometry using this divide button is if you come down here from the tool menu all the way down here to geometry and then open up this Dynamesh sub menu. So we have the geometry menu, we can open that up. And inside of the geometry menu, you have a Dynamesh menu. You're gonna see we have a Dynamesh button. So now if we turn on polyframe, you're gonna see we have two million polygons, but of course we know if we go down to subdivision level one, we have one really stretched, stressed point out here in space and some really bad skewed faces in there. But what we can do is we can convert this mesh to a Dynamesh. And how we're gonna do that is we're simply gonna just hit this Dynamesh button it's going to ask you if you want to freeze your subdivision levels before entering Dynamesh mode. We're not going to worry about that for now. So what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and hit no. And now you're going to see all of this geometry, if we zoom in a little bit, it's become even quads. You're going to see all of this mesh is now covered in nice even topology. So now when we go out of polyframe mode and I go down here and sculpt, it's pretty predictable. 
and I come up here and sculpt and I continue sculpting, it's very predictable because now the entire mesh is covered in the exact same size quads. So when I sculpt over here, it's the exact same as sculpting here and is the exact same as sculpting here and here and here. Now obviously it gets smaller up here so I'm not able to use my brushes effectively, but it's still got the same amount of geometry resolution. So with DynaMesh, what you're able to do, let's hit B, S, H, which is gonna grab our snake hook brush. And this is similar to the move brush. Let's go ahead and make our draw size a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna pull off of the surface here and you're gonna see as I pull, those polygons are gonna go really wonky. They're gonna get very skewed and stretched. So what you can do is you can pull out a little bit and then we have DynaMesh turned on. We already turned that button on. So how you re-DynaMesh your mesh is just control drag, hold down control, touch your pin to the tablet, move it out, and then let go of your pin. And you're gonna see it's going to reevaluate this mesh and add more geometry. So as we continue to go up here and we're really stressing this geometry out, control drag again, it'll redyna mesh. So now what you're able to do, let's try another brush. Let's go to B I N for the inflate brush. Let's make our draw size a little bigger. And we're just going to just inflate this end over here. And you're going to see as we're inflating this geometry, those polygons are getting bigger and bigger. So if we tried to sculpt on this right now, it would be very predictable through here where the polygons are all the same size, but then through here, not as good. However, again, we can redistribute this geometry, just control drag out here, and there we go. Now we have all new geometry in here that's nice and evenly distributed. If we go back to our standard brush, BSH or BST. We can go through here and as we sculpt down here is the same as sculpting on here. Because again, that geometry has been reestablished, basically redistributed. It's had ge new geometry projected onto that skewed geometry, that stressed geometry, giving us a new distributed result, which is much easier and much more predictable to sculpt on. So if you're just trying to create, DynaMesh is a really, really powerful tool that'll allow you to do a lot of really cool things as we move forward. But that's the basics of DynaMesh. So now that we've done that, what we can do, let's go ahead and turn off Polyframe. We can either scrub all the way back to where we started and we have our basic geometry here, or let's just go ahead and grab a new primitive. So I'm gonna to touch this palette over here. Let's grab a Cube 3D. Let's turn on our Polyframe and you're gonna see uh, it's a white polygroup, and that's kind of an indication that it hasn't been made a Polymesh 3D yet, because you're going to see with Polyframe turned on, if I go up here to make Polymesh 3D, because again, this is a primitive, if I go here to initialize, I can do all sorts of cool stuff, you know, as an initialized primitive. And I think originally the H divide was set to 32, so we'll go ahead and put that back up. But if you're ready to sculpt on this, again, what you have to do is come up here to make PolyMesh 3D, and you're gonna see it's gonna turn a color. And that's not to say that you couldn't get a color very close to white that might kind of throw you off, but generally speaking, when you hit make PolyMesh 3D, it'll give you a nice vibrant color. And in fact, to see this a little bit better, you can even go in here to your material palette and choose something like Skin Shader 4 or Sketch Shader 2. And that'll kind of, while you have Polyframe mode turned on, make it a little bit easier to see. So now going back to sculpting, again, we have our standard brush selected. We can try sculpting on this surface here, and let's switch back to matte cap gray, turn off our poly frame. And so as we're sculpting on here, we're kind of sculpting on this surface, and then as we get towards the top here, you're gonna see it does some very kind of a pinched look up here. And that's because when you turn poly frame back on, it has a bunch of triangles converging into one spot. And again, that doesn't make for very good sculpting. Nice even geometry does, but this isn't nice even geometry. It's got a bunch of little triangles packed uh, into the top here converging onto one point. So again, all we gotta do, go over here to Geometry, turn on DynaMesh. Now we have Geometry even all over the object. So now when I go out of Polyframe mode and we have our standard brush, as I sculpt across the surface, my brush behaves as expected. It doesn't pinch here. As we go across here, it acts very normal. Now you're gonna see there's a bunch of options in here but the two main ones I'm gonna talk about is blur and resolution. Blur I'm only gonna talk about to come up here and just turn it to zero. You don't really need to blur your mesh out as you're DynaMeshing. The other one's resolution. 
So you can see right now as I'm sculpting on my mesh, I'm getting pretty good detail out of this. However, if I want to get very fine detail in here, if I zoom in here, you're going to see it starts uh, getting a little bit low res. Now in the grand scheme of things, it's actually a pretty decent resolution, but if you wanted even more resolution, what you can do, if you turn Polyframe back on, you can come in here and you can change this resolution slider. So just click and drag this up. So now we're at 360, and if I control drag in my window, it'll go ahead and re-dynamesh. Now, there might be a chance that it you know, you you crank this up, you crank this down, and you redrag, and it doesn't do anything. Like, oh no, I changed it to 224, and it's not doing anything. You may have to repoint ZBrush into going, hey, this mesh right here. Just take your hold down Shift and take your smooth brush and kind of smooth a little area here. And then if you Control Drag, it'll kind of remind ZBrush that I'm working on this object here. So you may need to kind of jump start or kick start it uh, into action. We're going to see if I crank this back up to like you know. 480 and control drag and again just smooth if you need to control drag now these squares are much smaller so if I turn off polyframe and I go through here and start sculpting I'm able to get even more detail on my mesh now I don't have subdivision history so I can't go down to a lower subdivision and then go back up and make changes but generally speaking, when you're using DynaMesh, this is kind of to block out your main idea. So to do that, again, let's go back up here to this cube. Let's grab a Sphere 3D primitive. And ours might be a little bit lower resolution than the one you have. All we got to do is go down here to our initialize, change H and V divides to maybe 120 by 120. Hit enter. Click Make Polymesh 3D. And again, these, this geometry is very nice and well distributed. So we can go through here, turn off polyframe, and you can sculpt across here no problem. However, when we get to the top here, it is going to have that polarized cap, which in this instance doesn't make too much of a difference. But again, if we go through here with our snake hook brush, B, S, H, and make any drastic changes, we're not going to be able to sculpt on this geometry unless we come down here and make it DynaMesh. Now, there's caveats to that, but basically DynaMesh is a really good way to go through and do a block out. Get your main idea in, and then we'll discuss techniques where you can go through and begin redistributing geometry through Z-Remesher and projection to get that subdivision level and detail back. But for now, while you're just getting your idea out, DynaMesh, again, is a very powerful tool. So let's take this undo slider back. So we just have a sphere, and let's go ahead and start talking about sculpting that head. 